my daughter, Marissa Caitlin Legato, passed away on December 30th, 2022. She's been gone five months and three days. It's been 22 weeks and a day since she left this earth. I'm here to fight the cause and to keep her face in people's faces. Marissa was voted uh, most likely to be famous and this is not the way Marissa would have wanted to get her face up on camera or on a stage of any kind. Marissa was the most precocious little girl. She would try to get away with things on the sly, but she was never good at it because she was not a good liar. She found her home really in singing and in theater. She was such a kind soul. Uh, I met my wife on the internet, and I came down to Texas in 2006. Marissa just turned five. She was so fun to be around. I know when I met her, and came down here, we went and the, one of the first things we did is we went and we did karaoke. That's when I heard her sing. And I was just amazed how many people clapped and it was just awesome. There was a guy named Chris at the restaurant we would go to and um, they would sing Life as a Highway together. And it was so cute because she's singing the chorus along with him singing the lyrics, the regular lyrics, and it was cool. And her original song was Redneck Woman. She sang that like it was no tomorrow. She loved it this five-year-old singing redneck woman up there people would cheer her on and she loved it she got mad at me one time and i don't really blame her for getting mad at me now when i think about it um she had a um, position um to audition um for america's got talent and she would she was up there in line standing I'm waiting for it, but she had promised to sing in a production at the church. And I made her follow through and leave America's Got Talent and fulfill her commitment with the church. And she was angry with me for a long time about that. <laughs> and now I think about it, I should have let her stay there and, and do it, but... You know, think about how short time is. You think there's going to be other years, other, you know, she was young. As time went on, she went to another private school. That is when she started having some difficulties making friends and everything. The grades were good, so we gave her more things. So she was always loved so much. The change came her junior year. Um, something tragic happened to her. She was assaulted and did not happen to tell me until it was almost two years later. And, and I noticed she'd been putting on weight. And, you know, she would isolate herself in a room. She just wasn't happy like she used to be so she she changed a lot after that and then right before her senior year she lost my her great grandmother and her grandmother she lost three weeks into her senior year and she lost one of her best friends Gus in August as well, and that was in 2019, and Marissa was a 2020 graduate. And COVID really, really impacted her. She, you know, she would hang out with her friends, and I would let her hang out with her friends because there was nothing else to do. Um, she was still, you know, doing school online, but, you know, these kids had so much free time. She 
it, she really changed after that. And then she had her best friend's mom passed away. And she would feel so much of other people's pain. She was very empathetic. She had a lot of empathy for people. And she would really smother people with attention at times. Um, her best friend, Rose, she loved Rose. They were like sisters. Rose is like my second child because Marissa was my only child. And Rose was welcome at our house anytime and vice versa. And they met each other in elementary school. They were at a little private school in Duncanville um, called Marywood School. And they met there in... They met in fourth grade. They didn't like each other. And then fifth grade, they started tolerating each other and becoming best friends. And I'm thankful for the relationship Marissa had with Rose. And I'm thankful Rose is in my life, too. Um, because she's been extremely helpful through this process. My sister got sick in 2021. She had let her diabetes get out of control. And Marissa went to stay at her house to help my sister out and caring for herself. And she was going to school. Um... My sister became more difficult to take care of, and Marissa was really wanting to go, you know, to leave there. And unfortunately, my sister died on June 17th of last year in 2022. And Marissa was very impacted by her death because Marissa said to me after that, you know, Mom, I've I've taken drugs before. And I was like, what? Because she knew my stance on drugs. And I was like, Marissa. She was like, no, 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 Mom. I haven't done anything in over a year. You don't have anything to worry about. I was like, are you sure? And she assured me, yeah, no problem, Mom. I know her friends would come over and... One of her friends, they smoke pot a lot, so are you doing that? No, I would never do that. <laughs> it's just the questioning of that stuff. Because it seemed like towards the end, she got a boyfriend. She was so happy. Bought him the Christmas and everything by uh, Amy's aunt's house. To me, it's almost like she wanted to have one more time to get high. And then go straight with it because she loved her boyfriend and wanted to go that path. But that's when she got the fentanyl in there. Even though we warned them, hey, you know, they're lacing all these drugs with fentanyl. And, oh, I know him. I went to school with him. And I trust him. She moved back home and you know things were you know kind of they were off things felt off um she was sleeping more than usual and she had a full i mean she had a almost full-time job she you know was going to school and you know i thought you know she's sleeping more She's tired, you know. But something also to know about Marissa is she was bipolar. And it was very difficult for us to get her on the right medication and for us to get her to take her medication. 
and taking her taking her medication was very hard for us. Um, to the point at the end, we were giving it to her. And actually the night that we found her, she had gone, she was supposed to be going to take a friend to work. She said, I wanna go take Josh to work. Can I take him to work? And it's like, well, yeah, we can. You can go, just just, just make sure you're back in time. Well, she went, I don't know if she took him to work or not, but when she came back home, she had food, so she made herself some food and then went back to her room. That's something she usually did was go back to her room, eat food, and then just go right to sleep. So that was like four or five o'clock. At about eight o'clock, Usually I like to put the dog in there with her so we don't have to mess with them. I put him in there. I went and sat back down. We watched some TV and all of a sudden he scratched it on the door. It's like how oh, he wants to come out. So I opened the door, let him out. And then I went back, sat down, watched more TV. We were watching TV in the living room. We didn't think anything of it. And her boyfriend kept, you know, text me. He was like, is Marissa okay? Is she there? And I just thought, Heck, I'll let her sleep, you know, it's not a big deal. So it, the TV finishes, or the television show um, finishes, and I tell Mark, my husband, to, you know, go get Marissa her pills. I went there to wake her up to take her meds, and I walked in there and I thought she was sleeping. I touched her leg and she was cold. And then I looked and she had the white foam coming out of her mouth and blood coming out of her nose. And I, I tried waking, I couldn't wake her up and I started screaming at my wife. I immediately jumped up and got to the bedroom as quickly as possible. And I put my hands on her and she was cold. And I slapped her face, you know, and I was like, Marissa, Marissa, get up, <laughs> come on, and Mark called the police, and the next thing I know was an officer's moving me away from her. He ran in there, and uh, she was gone. She probably died a little after she ate, and I was wondering about when the dog went in there, because that's the same dog that was at her, my wife's sister's house when she died. And when he was there, he would not leave her, and he was just freaking out running around. So it was it was so scary just seeing her laying there, wondering what's going on, just freaking out still. When the cops came and looked at her, he never said nothing about any inkling of what happened and because I'm thinking I don't know what's going on because I don't know if she had a stroke heart attack any I don't know I didn't put two and two together about drugs until they left until we started talking until we started wondering hey we have her phone let's take a look because she always gave us her passcode to her phone so we could look at the initial everything on the iPhone the next day, we decided to look at her phone because we were suspicious. Okay, maybe we aren't as clear about her not doing anything as we thought. And we went through her phone and the communications with uh, one of her friends um, from school had gone to school with her for 12 years, was the one who sold her what she thought was Percocet, what she was told was Percocet. But unfortunately, according to her death certificate, she died from the toxic effects of fentanyl. And we took the police, her phone, and 
told them everything that we found in it, which was basically drug transactions between her friend for months through several of her friends. We had the bait transactions and we had the text transactions. I don't know if they thought she was deleting them from her phone, but no, Marissa didn't. <laughs> and I'm proud of her for that because it gave us something, you know. It let us know who she was with the last time she was out and who sold it to her. And we are determined to get justice for Marissa. The individual was arrested when he crashed his car high on drugs and he got probation out of it. So from that moment, he still went back to the same thing, selling drugs. So we don't know right now, but I know right now he's got some TikToks where he wanted to be trying to help people get off drugs, but he's still selling them to them. The Duncanville Police Department has been very, very good to us. They have kept us informed. Um, anytime we've called, they've called us right back. Um, I'm told that, you know, currently in Duncanville, there are three deaths that they're investigating, which includes Marissa's now. And December, when this happened, Marissa was the only one that they were investigating. They found out that one death that was labeled an overdose was not an overdose, that, that the person received fentanyl instead. So they opened theirs back up, and we've had another one in Duncanville. So we've tried to entangle ourselves within our hometowns. Um, people, <laughs> we're, we're um, we've gotten involved with the North Texas Fentanyl Coalition and we've participated in, in the applaud um, rally that was in Fort Worth. Um, that was actually our first time participating in a rally and was the first time I told Marissa's story. We actually did our first table by ourselves um, in Duncanville last week. We were, um, they had the Special Olympics Texas fire truck pull in Duncanville, which was held by the Dallas Sheriff's Department, or Dallas Sheriff's Department, you know, Dallas County Sheriff's Department and Duncanville Police. And they allowed us to have a booth there. And you'd be amazed at how many people came up and thanked us for spreading the word. The mayor's wife came up to me and talked to me. Um, you know, a lot of the people there were police and firemen and everything. And we had um, Narcan. Um, and many of them took the Narcan because they didn't have it in their patrol car or that they didn't have it available to them. And I think that is crazy. Our policemen should have that. They're the ones who are showing up at the houses first. They're the first responder, really. My goal here is I can't save my child, but maybe I can help save someone else's. And that's my goal, is to help save other people's children. Mine's gone. I'm going to keep her name out there. I love her. I can't wait to see her, <laughs> but when it's time, God gave her to me for 21 years. I got more time with her later on, <laughs> so then I got a job here to do.
we wouldn't have known to become advocates for fentanyl until something happens to one of our family members. Don't let that happen. Just jump out and do it now. Listen to the, the people when they're talking about fentanyl, how it's killing their children. Don't let it happen to you first and then do something. Start doing something now. Big takeaway is I should have listened more. I should have paid more attention to what was going on in my own home. Parents need to talk to their children. I did my best with what I knew to do. And, and I know she loved me, and that's all that matters.